All right, everybody, you can gather around. So um, this is this event's a little different. We block off the street often, and we put bags over the meters often. We had them up earlier this week for the casino votes to come in, but uh, this one's a little different. As you can see, there's, there's one type of car parked here. And for those of you who you know, might have just strolled upon this and not know what's going on, but we're here to announce something that's very exciting, and that is the City of New Bedford's acquisition of 10 electric vehicles that we will uh, immediately put into productive use. Um, after, um, and I'm going to make some introductions in a moment, but this is all part of our effort to modernize city government, to save taxpayer dollars and do right by the environment. We're very proud uh, to make this announcement today, but it has surely been a team effort and there are a number of people to thank. So let me just, uh, let me go through them quickly. You'll hear directly from some of them as part of our program today. And then once we're done with the program, I think we're gonna go for a little spin. And if I'm driving them, maybe a few people who will take their lives uh, in their hands as, uh, as passengers. So with all that, uh, let, me, um, let me thank uh, DP Commissioner uh, Marty Suberg, who couldn't be here uh, with us today, but and I want to thank, uh, in general, the Baker administration for uh, its commitment to uh, helping uh, communities, and particularly this community, which has been a leader uh, in green energy and energy conservation, uh, to make the most of their resources. This is a, as, um, as you'll hear in a moment from Deputy Commissioner Gary Moran, uh, this is a, a partnership between the state uh, and city government as well as the private sector uh, to really, uh, to, again, to modernize what we do and to save uh, taxpayer monies, uh, money. Um, I also want to thank, uh, and I'm sure Gary will as well, Sejel Shah from the Transportation Management Program uh, at DEP for uh, for all of her assistance in this effort. Um, uh, other state agencies uh, fall into the same category of folks that we've worked with a lot in the past, in the Patrick administration, now in the Baker administration, that have um, you know, enabled us to, uh, to partner well and save electricity, save uh, energy costs, save, um, uh, and to save on uh, taxpayer dollars. So I want to thank Commissioner Judith Judson, uh, who's the new commissioner at uh, at Energy Resources, as well, as well as Steve Russell, who runs the Alternative Transportation Program, uh, Michelle Broussard, uh, who's also with the Alternative Transportation Program. Uh, I want to thank uh, Nissan, uh, Anthony Lampkin, who's uh, Nissan's East Coast Manager, and with us today uh, is uh, Gene Goff, who runs the uh, electric vehicle business development uh, arm of Nissan in the region, and we look forward to your comments, Gene, but we yeah. thank you for all that, that you're doing at Nissan, and particularly here in New Bedford, as well as uh, Guy Bedeau from Milford Nissan, who's the, the LEAF specialist, and that's, in case you're wondering what these cars are called, they are LEAFs, or are they LEAFs? We'll find out when uh, <laughs> Gene gets up and speaks. Um, we also had, a, the, we are ably led by uh, a consultant um, who, um, as we have in many of our other energy initiatives, you know, it's all kind of new to everybody, and so we, we need some guidance uh, uh, from, from experts, and uh, we're lucky this time around to have Kathleen Connors of Voltec, who's, uh, who's given us an awful lot of, uh, an awful lot of uh, her effort and expertise in enabling us to move forward. In the city, of course, it's always a team effort, uh, from uh, the mayor's office, Neil Mel, the chief of staff, uh, Ari Sky, our CFO, from whom you will hear, in a moment, uh, as well as our facilities manager, Kim Blanchard, uh, energy director, Scott Durkee, uh, Deb Travers, who's always ably on the spot with uh, procurement issues that na help us navigate uh, uh, across the legal terrain, and our health director, Brenda Weiss, uh, as well. If you're wondering what, uh, what the health director is doing here, in a word, it's cleaner air, two words, cleaner air. Uh, which, and she'll come up and, and, uh, and, and weigh in about that in a moment. But we're very proud of, of this program as well as all of our uh, energy programs because it really is a, it's a mark of progressiveness on the part of the city. It's a mark of our ability to do things more efficiently. And, you know, you don't have to read the newspaper in our city for more than a week to recognize that 
Uh, we live in a time of diminished resources and we have to make more with less. That we have a, uh, uh, we have a really strong team that has been able to, to figure out how, just how to do that uh, despite, uh, despite tightening financial times. Uh, and you only have to look at, uh, look at other cities in the Northeast to see how much they're struggling to, to know, get a real feel for uh, you know, the pressures of the day. But we're able to manage it in part because we're making smart decisions uh, at every turn. Let me tell you a little bit about the vehicle. I don't want to steal the, the thunder of others who are going to be coming up, but um, uh, it's very affordable. Uh, because of the state assistance, because of Nissan's assistance, it works out uh, to be about $73 per vehicle per month. Uh, or $26,000 total uh, for leasing the 10 uh, electric vehicles, which is uh, far less than what we would pay for, uh, for the vehicles if they're the traditional gas guzzling type. And that's, uh, and that's, that's really significant because these things, these things get approximately, they, they run, they operate much more cheaply too. They get the equivalent, the energy equivalent of about 126 miles per gallon, which I don't know about you, but my car doesn't get nearly that much. It's, uh, so we're going to be saving on, on fuel costs uh, as well. And they're going to be replacing some uh, 10 vehicles uh, that have been in use in the city for uh, since the early 90s and that have fallen apart and that are, uh, and that are really uh, on the cusp of, uh, of falling down. So we're, we're, we're really looking forward to making sure that uh, uh, we get these vehicles on track as soon as we can. And, and have these out there and, and, uh, and good use. And, they, and by the way, they look pretty good too. So that's, that's something to boot. We'll tell people not to turn the air conditioning or the radio up too loud to make sure that, uh, make sure that we get the most of uh, our, our, the electricity available. But again, this is, uh, it's, it's an exciting day for the city. Uh, this, this is a, an effort that is in conjunction with uh, our solar program. Last year, the Wall Street Journal reported that of all U.S. cities, New Bedford derives more electricity from solar than any city uh, in the United States uh, except Honolulu. And Honolulu gets more days like this, as we all know. Uh, but we're also, you know, we've, you look around and the, phys the physical manifestations of these improvements are here. The LED lights, we've replaced 10,000 of those uh, over the course of uh, the last year. The work on City Hall uh, to retain energy and to, uh, to deal with costs um, is afoot, and that's going forward. We also have, um, uh, we're also positioning ourselves, as you all know, to become a leader in offshore wind. And what we're, what we're doing uh, collectively is making sure that, again, we're making the most of uh, our opportunities to save taxpayer funds, but we're also, uh, just as importantly, using uh, the green economy as a way of, uh, of repositioning New Bedford's brand. I mean, we want to be seen as progressive, as forward-leaning, as smart on these issues, and that's, that is a good antidote to being seen as a gritty industrial town, which we're not anymore. New Bedford is moving forward, it's reinventing itself, and it's succeeding. So uh, with all that, let me, uh, let me introduce, uh, who can go into a little more detail from uh, the state's perspective, is Gary Moran, who is the uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Mass DEP, whose uh, DEP has been a great partner through the last two administrations, and they have uh, they've been uh, they've been um, working very hard on this project uh, to make it happen and allow New Bedford to become uh, continue to be a leader in green energy uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and beyond. Thank you, and uh, Gary, come on up Thank and say you. a few words. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mayor Mitchell. It's it's great to be here in New Bedford today on behalf of the uh, uh, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito to celebrate this important announcement about um, uh, clean vehicles and also uh, clean air. Uh, electric vehicles, zero emission, and plug-in hybrids, they're an important element of the baker Polito administration's commitment to address climate change, provide cleaner air for our citizens, uh, and improve our air quality. Uh, the transportation sector accounts for roughly a third of the greenhouse gas emissions emitted in Massachusetts. So the deployment of more electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles is one of the most important steps we can take toward helping the Commonwealth achieve some ambitious uh, goals, including the goals set by the Global Warming Solutions Act, which requires that we reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 25% below 1990 levels 
by 2020 and at least 80% by 2050. And these vehicles are not only reducing greenhouse gas emissions, uh, as, as the mayor mentioned, they're also uh, reducing other air pollutants, uh, particularly smog forming emi emissions. Smog and fine particulates generated by combustion of petroleum cause respiratory impacts such as asthma and lower respiratory symptoms, not to mention their contribution to uh, additional heart attacks, even premature deaths. And these are particularly acute issues sometimes in developed areas or urban areas, environmental justice areas. So uh, these clean cars actually do help protect public health as well. And given how clean our energy grid is here in New England, electric vehicles can be compared to driving a 75 mile gallon uh, per gallon gasoline car, which is better than all the hybrids on the road today. Over the lifetime of the electric vehicle, an owner can reduce fuel consumption by more than 6,000 gallons of gasoline and reduce the fuel cost by thousands of dollars and also help cut our reliance on imported oil. It's for all these reasons back in 2013 on Earth Day, MassDEP launched the Massachusetts Electric Vehicle Incentive Program, or Mass EVIP. We're always very clever with our acronyms. Uh, Mass EVIP is an incentive program administered by MassDEP. It provides incentives to municipal and state fleets and colleges and universities to acquire electric vehicles and charging stations. Mass uh, EVIP is intended to uh, encourage and increase the deployment of zero emission vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles. It's not just bringing them, helping them bring to a city like New Bedford, but um, I have to commend the organizers of the event today. When you see the cars like this, clearly just, just a visual, just seeing them used in the community and being used by the municipal employees is a great way to raise awareness and acceptability of these vehicles. Over the last two years, um, the Mass EVA program has awarded more than 1.1 million to 44 separate entities for 109 electric vehicles, 76 full battery electric vehicles, and 33 plug-ins. And I believe uh, the cities are all uh, full battery vehicles, which is the, the cleanest vehicles. Um, and also uh, close to 400,000 in financial assistance for uh, charging stations. So it's great to be here with the city uh, as they unveil the acquisition of the 10 uh, Nissan LEAF electric vehicles and um, the in installation of the two charging stations. The city and uh, Mayor Mitchell really have been leaders in environmental sustainability. Uh, they continue to, continue to demonstrate this leadership. Uh, they're one of the early EVIP participants. Uh, the city was awarded an amount totaling $100,000 between uh, the first two phases of EVIP for the acquisition of the vehicles and the charging stations. And we're pleased that not only will the city benefit from the vehicles, uh, reduce fuel consumption, or have cleaner air, but the public can also benefit from the charging stations, which they can use during normal hours. Uh, I should also note that the Commonwealth also does have an incentive program to assist citizens who are interested in purchasing leasing electric vehicles. It's the Massachusetts Offers Rebates for Electric Vehicles, or the MORE EV program. And you can go to their website to get more information on that, where they offer up to 2,500 incentives for individuals to purchase uh, uh, electric vehicles. And again, it's a lot more convenient when you have some available stations in the area. Uh, this is funded by the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs and the Department of Energy Resources. And I, did, I also did want to thank the uh, professionals at MassDEP who really support this program, our Air Director Christine Kirby, and the Mayor did mention uh, Sejal, who is really the expert in the program. Often, government sort of gets uh, tagged with uh, charges of just being bureaucratic, uh, maybe not particularly nimble, but if you want to see the craft of government and how it can really work, listen to a discussion with Sejal, Scott Durkee, Jean from Nissan, and you can see how they really work this program to have real environmental and financial benefits for the city. So again, I want to thank uh, the city and, and commend them for this effort and uh, congratulate you. All right, thank you, Gary. And we really do appreciate the partnership with the Baker administration and, uh, and all the work that you guys are doing at DP, and we hope for uh, many more occasions like this in the future. Um, as I said earlier, this is a uh, cost-saving measure. Taxpayers in our city are going to be saving a fair amount of money in the long run as a result of this initiative. And what we're, uh, there's no better person to speak to those savings than our CFO, uh, Ari Sky, who had a uh, strong hand in uh, figuring out how these things get financed and how they become active. Ari. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a very exciting day. We've been working on this for a long time. I think um, I think back to about two years ago when I started here, and Scott Durkee coming to my office and oh, sorry, and uh, telling me that we had this grant and you know how do we want to go about using it. Um, we decided to uh, we had grant for five. We decided to double down, do another five. So we had ten vehicles, and um, 
we're, we're using it to replace some really seriously outdated vehicles at exchange, um, which were frankly costing the city money because of their age. Um, the existing vehicles that are being replaced average about 20 years old. They're 1995 on average. Um, and this will uh, refresh the fleet significantly. Um, when looking to replace 10 vehicles by comparison, conventionally you probably have to spend about $200,000 or so, maybe a little more. Um, but the combination of state grant funding, rebates, federal incentives has allowed the city to lease these vehicles for, 20, for about $26,000 um, over three, uh, for three years. So it's a one-time payment and then we have them for three years. Um, in addition, the city received um, two chargers from uh, DEP as well as other five chargers from um, Nissan, um, which enabled us to uh, equip City Yard appropriately to uh, be able to charge all the vehicles and, and we didn't have to put any cost out for those. Those were all done as part of the grant or provided by Nissan free of charge. Um, at the end of the three-year lease, the city will have the option to either purchase the vehicles outright or acquire a new set utilizing the same framework. There's already grant money out there to continue this process going forward. Um, it really is a very effective way to upgrade our fleet, um, run everything cheaper and, uh, and more effectively, and, um, and also provide a, a better product for our staff and services for the, uh, for the uh, residents as well. Thank you. All right. All right, next up um, is uh, Gene Goff from Nissan. And I said this is a public-private partnership. Nissan uh, really stepped up not only in helping us uh, acquire a great product, but also uh, worked very closely with the city and the state to make sure that we, uh, that we, we got it on time, uh, and certainly on budget, but in a way that really fit the city's needs. So we really want to thank Nissan Gene for uh, for its uh, collaboration in this effort, and I just ask you to say a few words. Sure, be happy to. Well, this really is an exciting time, and, and we're very pleased to be a partner with the City of New Bedford. Nissan is uh, a leading electric vehicle plug-in uh, in the industry, and it's by virtue of the uh, Nissan LEAF. It is a 100% electric vehicle. So I think uh, that popularity is borne out by the 180,000 cars that are globally sold, and over 80,000 are here in the United States, we're pleased to say, and growing every day. Uh, we'll, you'll find that when the city is using these, they are benefit, benefiting by it, not only through the uh, acquisition cost, but the total cost of ownership. This is the same thing a consumer can experience. The acquisition cost due to the uh, state's incentive programs combined with federal program of 7,500, really gives you a compelling $10,000 incentive on the vehicles for consumers. We also have a workplace charging program, and that's been referred to here, that we work with companies as well as municipalities and colleges around the state. So the program and partnership that we have goes throughout the state of Massachusetts. The car acquisition cost is not only compelling, but also that total cost of ownership is with regard to the ongoing power of the vehicle and the limited amount of scheduled maintenance required on these cars. So as far as something for the pocketbook and looking beyond as gas prices rise and fall, this is a common uh, benefit you'll find from the car is the uh, lessened scheduled maintenance on it. Uh, consumers, and I think some of the folks that have already driven the car in the part of the city, have found that some of the fun aspects of the car is the immediate torque, 100% power on this vehicle. So those that do take it out for test drive, and we would love to arrange for ride and drives for the citizenry of this uh, New Bedford to experience uh, the torque of the vehicle, the turning radius, the general roominess. Another aspect that people comment on is how quiet the car is because it is all electric. So you'll find there are a lot of compelling and fun aspects to ownership of the car or leasing of the vehicle. Um, I think what we found here is the addition of these 10 LEAFs to the city of New Bedford really does help with your uh, renewable energy initiatives and has made the city one of the most progressive in the country with regard to sustainability. So we really are pleased and proud to be a partner here. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. I, I appreciate uh, both Gary's and Jean's recognizing uh, New Bedford's uh, leadership in this area. Uh, last week, I should note that in San Francisco, the United States Conference of Mayors recognized New Bedford uh, among uh, the, the leading cities in the United States on uh, energy efficiency uh, and uh, energy renewable energy production. It really uh, have stood out, and it's been recognized by uh, 
the likes of the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and many other national publications and now uh, the, uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So uh, we've got, it, it only happens with great teamwork and I'd like to introduce another important member of that team and that is our facilities uh, and fleet director, uh, Ken Blanchard, who's hard at work in making not only the facilities energy efficient but also the fleet uh, energy efficient. Ken. Thank you. Um, from a fleet management perspective, um, you should know that in the city of New Bedford we have approximately 650 vehicle units that uh, we maintain on a daily basis. Um, of those 650 units, approximately 70 uh, passenger vehicles like you see around you today. To add 10 brand new virtually maintenance-free vehicles to our fleet is going to be a tremendous assistance to our staff that's challenged every day with maintenance of older vehicles. We'll be able to retire the older gas guzzling vehicles that require constant maintenance um, with 10 brand new vehicles. So we look forward to, to these getting on the road. Uh, we look forward to retiring 10 vehicles, older vehicles in their place. And one thing that uh, I would like to say, a few of us have had the opportunity to drive these already, obviously, to get them where they need to be. And every person, uh, when they get out of the vehicle, the first thing they say, and that's me included, is, wow, these are really cool. So I don't want you to lose that sight either. These are really cool to drive uh, in addition to everything else. So thank you very much. Thanks, All right, Ken. As you'll, uh, you'll note that Ken did not disclose just how fast he drove uh, the car in his test drive. Um, and last up, I, I um, foreshadowed uh, Brenda Weiss's uh, appearance here. Uh, these, um, these vehicles really do help us um, make our air cleaner, and for obvious reasons. I mean, they don't, their, their level of emissions is, is far below what it is uh, of, uh, in fact, I don't even, you you, you'll have a chance to explain the difference. Um, but they're, they, they're healthier for the environment, and when, when they're healthier for the environment, the air we breathe is better, that means that our kids will be healthier, and when kids are healthier, they can learn more and so forth, and all kinds of good stuff happens. So, um, so the health benefits shouldn't be un, uh, of these vehicles shouldn't be understated. They're real, and I would just ask Brenda to come up and talk a little bit about them. Thank you. Of course, we are thrilled to be the department to be chosen to receive the first 10 vehicles um, in the New Bedford Health Department. I want to tell you the existing vehicles did need a little upgrading. There were holes in the floor. There were a lot of issues in addition to the serious air pollution um, that was um, generated by them. So some of my guys got the opportunity this week to sit in the car and said it is really cool. And in fact, there's quite a bit of room in there. They decided that they could probably fit six people comfortably in one vehicle. And it doesn't look it by the size, does it? So it really is a super cool vehicle. But more on a positive note and more on a serious note, these ve vehicles help us become better stewards of the environment and it helps us promote the health and well-being of our residents. And I think that is what we should consider first and foremost. Me personally, it's going to make my department a lot more efficient, a lot more effective at all the jobs that we do, the compliance, the sanitary, uh, community sanitation projects. We travel around the city every day, all day, and these vehicles are going to make that job a lot easier and a lot more efficient. So I want to thank the mayor's office and the Nissan and everyone else for this. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brenda. All right. Uh, I'm. Uh we're all here to answer questions. Let me open it up if anybody has any. Where will the charging stations go, man? Where will the charging stations go? We've, uh, we've installed uh, ten char uh, nine charging units at City Yard uh, for overnight charging. There are also uh, four charging units at the Zyterian Theater. And uh, I'm sorry, three at the Zyterian Theater and one at the Elm Street Garage, and there are also four at the uh, Cogsall Street Municipal Parking Lot. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, let me add them. Um, thank you, Scott. All of, uh, all of the chargers are currently free to the public to use. All right, why don't we, uh, I think we're gonna get in the car right now, unless uh, we got another one. All right, so 
let's do this. We can we can get uh, public questions later. Let me uh, let's. I think we're gonna try out a vehicle. All right. I've been thinking about it, and I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job, and I want to buy some new stuff, like uh, a new phone, a car. Son, college is much more important than a new car. No, Mom, it isn't. Yes, son, it is. No. Yes. No, Mom. Anyways, it's my decision. Your decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college and have a better future. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? You sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov.